Welcome to the classroom. In today's classroom, we're going to continue our discussion on interpretation. Let's start with a natural lake. When interpreting a map of a natural lake, it is best to find the deep water, then look for structures that are related to the deep water. Here's a lake located in central Wisconsin. This Navionics map has some high detail. The contours are every foot. The closer the contour lines are would indicate a faster change in depth. When the lines are farther apart, it would indicate a flat. As you can see here, this lake has one big deep water basin. Let's try to see if we can find any structure situations. Starting at the far north end of the lake, we mostly see rather flat, gradual sloping areas. There is a hump indicated at 14 feet. The hump is located in what looks like a mostly flat area. We would check it out, but we would not likely spend much time in this area. Moving to the west and working our way around, it looks like we have another bar and hump that is close by. There is an indication that a deeper break line exists just to the left of the hump, and we would see a sharper break at the hump. This looks like a good structure situation here, and we would call this fishing water and give it a thorough working over. As we move further down the lake, we don't notice anything much, and we would call this trolling water, which means we would check it out trolling. If we found fish while trolling, we would then check the area and try to determine why the fish were caught here and what route did they use to get here. As we move further down, we see an area that has three points and humps indicated. It appears the two humps on each end break very shallow. Conditions would have to be good for the fish to move on a structure that has a shallow drop off. The hump in between them tops off at 8 feet, but just off the hump it looks like we have a sharper break in the deeper water. This whole area is a structure situation and we would work this area thoroughly. Continuing down the lake, it looks like we have trolling water. We can see a hump that tops off at 4 feet on the very south end of the lake, but there is a considerable flat between the hump and the deep water. The hump also breaks very shallow. We would consider this entire area trolling water. As we move along the east side of the lake, we have deep water swings in very close to one side. It looks like a couple of bars are present. We would check them out to see if any deeper break lines existed. Three st these structures here are very steep and we would be sure to check them out in the colder parts of the season. Continuing up the east side of the lake, there is an indication of a bar at 24 feet. A sharp break is indicated here. We would spend time checking this area. As we continue toward the north end of the lake, we can spot another potential structure situation. There is an 18 foot hump off the end of a rather big flat bar. Off the one side of the hump, we have a sharper break into the deepest water in the area. If the lake had walleyes or muskies present, we would check out this deeper structure. This lake is just over 2,000 acres and in short time we have eliminated most of the water and have determined that we have about four or five areas that we would give a thorough working over. As Buck says, it is always wise to check fully any structures that have possibilities. We would give these areas we just looked at a good going over. The final interpretation and mapping can only happen while you're on the water. You should always bring a paper and pencil with you. Another valuable tool to help you Map structures while you're on the water are markers. Throw them out and use them, especially when fishing an area for the first time. Using markers will speed up the mapping process and will keep you from getting lost on the structures. One of the most important things to do is to know where you are and know what you are trying to accomplish. Always draw a map of the structure when you are fishing it. On further trips, you can add additional details as needed. When drawing your map, you are interested in showing the break line, the breaks, and note where the deep water is located in relationship to the structure. Here's some fish that have been caught off of some of these structures we just looked at. In future classroom sessions, we'll go into detail on mapping a structure. For more information on this classroom subject, as well as any others, check out structurefishing.com education.